Now that I've made it awkward and uncomfortable and killed the energy in the entire room. Uh, I was lying, by the way. The pollen still really bothering me. All right, guys, are you ready for your first comedian coming to the stage tonight? Yeah. Please put your hands together for the guy who booed me earlier from the end of the bar, Joel Elliott. There was a Hole and Oats emergency hotline, in effect, at one point. Like, you could call it on your phone, and it would say, you know, press one for private eyes, press two for, you know, just all the hits, man eater. Uh, you just call it up. Anyway, I'm sorry. Okay, obviously, I am the only. There was somebody else that liked Hole and Oats, yeah? Okay, all right. We'll, we'll game up on the others later. Uh, my name's Joel. Uh, uh, thank you to your host. Give it up for your host for yeah. bringing the room into this awkward place. Yeah. <laughs> I do appreciate it. You can follow my awkward handle on Twitter by following at awkward handle on Twitter. Look it up. I'm there. Follow me. It'll be awkward. Uh, the musical portion of tonight's program is brought to you by Stashco Beard Oil. Look it up at www.s stashcompany.com. Uh, uh, this, uh, this is a popular favorite. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. The driver on the bus says, move on back, move on back, move on back. The driver on the bus says, move on back, all through the town. Bye, Lord. The underpinnings of society are institutionally racist, institutionally racist, institutionally racist. The underpinnings of society are institutionally racist all through the town. All time. And that concludes the musical portion of tonight's program brought to you by uh, Stashco Beard Oil. Warning, if you use Stashco Beard Oil, it says, you right here on the bottle, uh, the side effects include, but are not limited to, the following, colon, panties being thrown at you, comma, random women smelling your sweet beard, comma, offers of sexual favors, comma, a tender swipe rights, comma, and finally, immoral and depraved attention from nurses, comma, teachers, comma, strippers, comma, models, comma, bartenders, comma, hairstylists, comma, nuns, comma, playmates, comma, and any woman named Tiffany, comma, Brittany, comma, Summer, comma, Chastity, comma, or Alexis, period. Now, I pointed out the punctuation because, not only, first, I appreciate the Oxford comma, the use of the, the Oxford comma in this copy, but I want, a friend of mine, Kenny, put this out, and so I, like, I do want to critique this, because he didn't provide much money for the sponsorship, that, <laughs> That he put, and finally immorally, uh, and finally immoral and depraved attention. Finally immoral, not finally comma, immoral and depraved attention from all those people on you know, that, that list, but finally immoral and depraved. Meaning like the immorality of this attention is going to be terminal. I had that once, that's how I got here through like a toxic marriage. I don't want to attract that through some kind of potion on my beard, I just wanted to point that out. Facebook is like a pushy therapist. I was like, lately, Facebook's been saying, hey, you remember two years ago when you had that mental breakdown and alienated all your friends from the comedy scene? You wanna share some stuff about that? And I'm like, no, no Facebook, thanks. Yeah, I know that, that I remember that, that happening, and, you know, Oh, yeah, that was the time. And, and Facebook was like, okay, well, remember four years ago when you were married and you had two puppies? Here's a picture of the puppies. 
you want to you share that with everybody? That you know, like you're. Well, no, no. Yes, I missed the puppies. Thank you for putting that in my face, Facebook. It's, it's great. Twitter, I prefer Twitter because Twitter is like that therapist you go to and they, they say hi and you, lay, and you sit there and you start talking and they don't really respond. They just go, mm hmm. And like just jot down on a pad and you're, and you're like, and you say another thing and they're like, ah. And eventually you're just ranting and you're like, are you even listening to me? And, you know, like that's what it feels like when you're with like the Twitter therapist. I kind of prefer being in that in that realm because like Facebook is kind of how I got here. I was in one of those toxic relationships, like you know the term "walking on eggshells." Oh, nobody's ever heard this. Walking on like the relationship where like somebody is like using anger to like to okay. Uh, this one was, it was like walking on eggshells, but like I'm in the gimp costume for Pulp Fiction and on a leash and crawling. You know, like it was crawling through eggshells, uh, like the position uh, that, that I was in. And, uh, okay, like, uh, to give you an example uh, how bad it got, like in multiple states, at one point, like my, my partner was like, you know, chasing me through the, through the house, like being verbally abused and I'm trying to get away and I went into a room and like locked the door and they started uh, to try to undrill the doorknob to get at me. Like that's where, like that's the level of depravity. It was like The Shining, but I was Shelley Duvall. <laughs> it happened t like twice, once in Pennsylvania at home and then in an apartment here in Alabama, they're trying to like get through the door. And you would, might ask me the question, why didn't you leave? Well, I'll tell you. Because uh, when you try to leave, the push-pull relationship, the, the I hate you, don't leave me relationship, uh, the person affects like, you know, like punishments upon you. Like, like you, I go for the door, and the partner is like, uh, what are you doing? I'm trying, I'm leaving. Why? Because you just spent two hours screaming at me to go. Uh, and then like, why are you doing this to us? Don't abandon us. Like, I, it's not abandonment if you just spent an, you know, two hours chasing me. Uh, it, 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 was, it, it, was a whole, it was a whole situation, uh, this thing. And I didn't have a plan out of it, much like I don't have a plan out of this comedy set. You know, like I went into it thinking like, oh, yeah, let's just get into the deep stuff. Matthew did that tonight. Let's... That's it. Because there's so many new faces, like let's try to reintroduce, this is how we got here. Uh, but uh, much like my time in Alabama, uh, you know, my time here on stage, I just, I don't know how to get, how to get out, how to get away, you know? Like it's good to like tie it up in a bow and stuff. I wish I had a plan, Matthew. No, not like you do. Thank God, if I, I stopped attempting suicide 29 years ago. Like, how about you said you're 31? When you were two years old, that's when I was like, okay, no more of this. You know, like, I, I was like, that, right? Are you only a couple years old? I'm like 39, I'm pushing, yeah, I don't know. I'm a good handful of years older than you. Like, I hit comedy retirement age uh, 10 years before I started doing stand-up comedy. At the age of 35, and at this level, gentlemen. And stand up comedy had a, played a real good hand in uh, both getting me into and out of homelessness. That was, because when you're in a controlling relationship, like uh, talking to other people is, uh, you know, forbidden generally. And uh, my, like, okay, so here's the timeline. We got to Alabama. Uh, through circumstance, you know, and now we're isolated here in LA. And uh, she knocked out my two front teeth in a little scuffle. And I started getting bold. And I posted on Facebook the YouTube song, All I Want for Christmas is My Two Front Teeth, because the holidays were coming. And nobody was going to get that joke, you know. Like, her best friend did, and she thought it was hilarious. You know, like, when, when we came to visit, she was like, did she really don't know you're doing this? Like, yes! I showed her, you know, and we laughed about it. I was like, you know, she's gonna kill you. I'm like, I know! And, uh, it was kind of a suicide attempt, I think. But, uh, 
Uh, so then, you know, like, I was getting bolder and posting things on Facebook, and, like, and things were just going to shit in the whole marriage, you know. So I was like, I'm going to do stand-up comedy. Like, if this person's going to kill me by the end of this, which all my friends and family are afraid of, certainly it's going to happen. Let's do something I've always wanted to do. Yeah. So I came out to the coffee shop and I did a set. And I posted that set on Facebook. And that's when my partner was like, okay, let's ruin his life the way we were promising for years. <laughs> you know, file some paperwork and stuff. And get the cops to come, move him into a hotel room, and you know, try to put him away. We'll get into that story some other time. You know? uh, but uh, yeah, comedy got me in. And when I got out, hit the streets, uh, all these comedians, uh, helps me get back on my feet. After about two months, when they were sure that I was a cool guy. And I appreciate that to, to, to no end. Uh, I always will. Matt Myers, you've been great. I, on the other hand, have been Joel Weller. Keep it going for Joel Elliott, everybody. Wow, those stories about your ex are super relatable to way too many of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. um, yeah, I didn't know you were married to Leah. <laughs> you never met her. You never met her. That was an inside joke just for the people on this couch. These couches. All right, guys, we're going to keep this moving right along.